TIA's 2014 Network of the Future Conference is happy to welcome Gary Bolton, Vice President, Global Marketing, ADRAN. Hi, Deborah. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. How do you see the telecom industry changing in the next two years, and how does your company plan to stay ahead of the curve? Well, Deborah, you know, the, we're in an amazing time right now in the telecom industry. You know, things are changing at a rapid pace. I mean, you're seeing that every day. Um, and the pace of change is getting faster and faster and faster. And so how do we keep up with that? And we look at, you know, the way consumers want to consume products and services. It's, you know, they're kind of in the iPhone era, right? And you want to be able to get apps and be able to do things instantly and have everything everywhere where they want it. And, but if you look at the way that the network is today, it's really, you know, service providers are focused on four things. One is getting residential broadband out to everybody. They're also trying to ramp out their enterprise services, so, you know, ramp up the, you know, business service revenue, as well as, you know, the rollout of the mobile infrastructure, so the LTE network. And then all this has to be connected to the cloud, so the data centers. So now if we look at all these, you know, four key objectives, they're really on, you know, all these overlay networks. And so the way we have to do this is to be able to get one to a converged network so that we can get all these services on a converged access platform and then be able to offer different service level agreements, SLAs, for whether it's residential broadband or enterprise services or mobile backhaul and all for our cloud services that we have access to all that. So now as we get to this converged network and then be able to get everything on these super high speed fiber optic networks and be able to launch these services with different service level agreements. Um, this all has to be done um, at low cost, the lowest deployed cost per bit, as well as we need to be able to um, have network automation so that people can ramp up services the way you would do, in essence, an iPhone app. So if you want to be able to have more bandwidth, you just be able to provision that service. If you want to have things like uh, cloud-based DVR, like from watching TV, or being able to select shows and stuff like that over your triple play network, you want to be able to do that instantly. And so it's all this, in, everything instantaneously. So I think what we're seeing is a lot of focus on virtualizing key network functions and being able to get to this full software-defined network. And so that's the abstraction of all the, 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 the management control from the data plane and being able to leverage those into quick activation of service and service delivery. And what that does for companies like Adtran is it enables us to be able to deliver these um, kind of solutions much quicker because they'll be able to get in the networks much faster. So it's a very exciting time for all of us in the industry. Will FTTN advances delay FTTH? Why or why not? Yeah, so fiber to the node and fiber to the home, there's been a debate over time and, you know, kind of the, the general thinking is, you know, let's get everything on glass, if anything on fiber optics as deep in the network as possible is going to provide the most scalable bandwidth. But as we find, you know, the, you know, so Atran, we're fortunate that uh, we're adding more fiber to home customers than all our competitors combined. So we're seeing a, a rampant adoption of fiber to home, so whether it's active ethernet or GPON technologies, um, so there's really exciting things going on with fiber to home. But it's, there's a, you know, not every deployment topology enables you to have the economics to deploy a fiber to home. And so what we have is a whole portfolio of solutions that enables you to be able to get high bandwidth services um, through deep fiber deployments. For example, in Europe, uh, we are deploying lots of uh, VDSL2 vectoring. And so basically what that is, is that's deep fiber, but it enables um, using the ex existing copper twisted pair to be able to provide super high bandwidth services. And so what that does is it allows um, high bandwidth service revenue to be collected by the operators and being able to get more deployment out to their subscribers and subscribers have this great bandwidth and then that will f over time uh, fund deeper and deeper fiber and so what you'll see coming from Adtran and companies like us is uh, smaller nodes, we're getting to smaller topologies and uh, technologies such as um, vectoring and w just to kind of step back. So VDSL2 is being able to get high um, capacity over a twisted pair. Vectoring is controlling the noise environment so you get theoretical um, rates. So then we actually can bond those pairs together to be able to get more bandwidth and then there's something called G.fast coming down the line that even gets more capacity across the you know, existing infrastructure. And then we have uh, 
innovations even beyond GFS. So it's never stopping. It's really exciting. And uh, a lot of great things are happening for you know, getting broadband not only to more people, but to higher um, bandwidth to gigabit communities. With network evolution technologies moving so quickly, how do you and your company plan to stay relevant? Well, you know, that's a good question because, you know, if you look at the uh, Fortune 100 companies and over time they keep changing, right? And the only um, companies that survive and that actually uh, prosper are the ones that can evolve, change, and grow. And that's a key mantra from our company. So if you look across every organization in our company, um, you know, that is what we look at is not what we did yesterday, but what is, how can we evolve, change, and grow on a daily basis our current practices. So for example, um, not too many years ago, we were very hardware centric. So we um, were very focused on silicon development and being able to you know, drive these ASICs into hardware platforms and ma ramp that out. Where today, um, most of our engineering, so about 40% of our company is hardcore R&D engineers. And uh, we are really focused on agile engineering and we have multi-site um, R&D. So we're able to do two week scrums and able to have, you know, be able to quickly develop uh, software products that we are able to get um, you know, into our customers and to be able to deliver quickly. And these have to be through our you know, um, labs in Germany, our labs in Ottawa, labs in Boston, Phoenix, India, Huntsville. And so these are all working together collaboratively from a virtual environment and uh, being able to deliver. And so you know, if, if we look at what our customers are, are witnessing or experiencing, I should say, is that you know, they don't have clear visibility to the future requirements of their customers. And so we have to develop products and platforms that enable them to be highly flexible so they can not only anticipate what their customers are going to need in the future, but they need to be able to quickly adapt and react so they can launch new services and, and, and new uh, features and functions, you know, basically spent on a dime. So it's really about having that service velocity and service flexibility. Thank you very much for being with us today. Deborah, it was a pleasure. Always a pleasure to be here at TIA.